want me to open it. Let me get a picture. Remember that consciousness is power. Consciousness is education and knowledge. Consciousness is becoming aware. It is the perfect vehicle for students. Consciousness raising is pertinent for power. And be sure that power will not be abusively used, but used for building trust and goodwill domestically and internationally. Tomorrow's world is yours to build. Yuri Kochiyama. So transform yourself first, because you are young and have dreams and want to do something meaningful. That in itself makes you our future and our hope. Keep expanding your horizon, decolonize your mind, and cross your borders. Study history. Learn about yourselves and others. There is more commonality in all our lives than we think. It will help us understand one another. Malcolm X. Education is an important element in the struggle for human rights. It is the means to help our children and our people rediscover their identity and thereby increase their self-respect. Education is our passport to the future. For tomorrow belongs only to the people who prepare for it today. Malcolm X. <laughs> y'all gonna have to practice keep clapping because you know I don't I don't start the next part until y'all really clap like you mean it. Woo! Just like we didn't start the next part before unless you was hugging like you mean it. Those were Yuri's great grandkids. <laughs> I love them so much. Yeah, so such much. amazing, amazing souls. Alright, so let's call up Emilia, Rakim, and Mario. Woo! Yes, yes. A man who stands for nothing will fall for anything. Malcolm X. Woo! I'm for truth, no matter who tells it. I'm for justice, no matter who it is for who, no matter who it is for or against. I'm a human being, first and foremost, and as such, I'm for whoever and whatever benefits humanity as a whole. Malcolm X. Education is the passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs to those who prepare for it today. Malcolm X. There is no better than, there is no better than adversity. Every defeat, every heartbreak, every loss contains its own seed, its own lesson on how to improve your performance the next time. Malcolm X. Don't be in a hurry to condemn because he doesn't do what you do or think. As, as, I'm sorry, I'm afraid that over. Don't be in a hurry to condemn because he doesn't do what you do or think as, as fast as you are. Or think as fast. There was a time when you didn't know what you know today. Malcolm X. is think for ourselves. It's good to keep wide open ears and listen to what everybody else has to say. But when you come to make a decision, you have to weigh all of what you've heard on its own and place it where it belongs. And then come to, to a decision for yourself. You'll never regret it. But if you form the habit of taking what someone else says about the thing without checking it out for yourself, you'll find that other people will have you hating your own friends and loving your enemies. This is one of things that our people are beginning to learn today that it's very important to think out of the situation for yourself, Malcolm X. From 1965, discussion from a young civil rights fighter from Mississippi. Okay. 
Education is an important element in the struggle of human rights. It is the means to help other children and our people rediscover that their identity and thereby increase their self-respect. Education is our passport to the future, for tomorrow belongs only to the people who prepares for it today. Malcolm X, O-A-A-U, founded Valley, June 28, 1964. Power in defense of freedom is greater than power in behalf of tyranny, tyranny and oppression because power, real power, comes from our convictions which produce action, uncompromising action. Four young people out here, Sean. I see a lot of other people who really helped make this project what it is. It would not have been this project without the amazing young people um, who really helped bring this along. Another amazing young person, I'm not sure if he's back yet. Okay, he ain't back yet. He'll probably come share a word with y'all in the public sharing moment because we already know. Right now, what we would like to do is give an opportunity for all of our core members to come up together and um, share a last word. If there's anything people want to share, they didn't get to share feelings about the process and whatnot. We also have a statement from Julian Terrell, who's our one uh, team member who could not be here today due to an unfortunate circumstance, um, but he did write a little speech for it to do a uh, send along, a little statement to send along. So we get all our team members to please come up to the front right quick, like uh, Sean, wherever you are, bro. Sean Lynn to the front. <laughs> Trying to do the movie voice, can't really do it. Um, but I. All right, so this is a statement from Julian. I'm gonna, I'm gonna read Julian's statement. Uh, for those who don't know Julian, he is Harlem born and raised. Um, he has been a big part of this project. You know, IDing all the walls in West Harlem, figuring out. Yeah, who, Julian. Yes, yes, yeah. Julian. Like hours and hours and hours of work. Of, you know, I think that this wall meant so much to West Harlem. You know, building 545 is right there. It's that building right there where Yuri and her family lived for 39 years, and also where Malcolm came to visit them. Yuri worked here. This building used. To, anybody know what this building used to be, except for the Kojama family? <laughs> anyone know? Yeah, go ahead, call it out. Yeah. What? Tell us. Yeah. And what? What did this building be? You know? You know what this building used to be? Uh, no? Okay, all right. <laughs> Almost. Well, I mean, yeah. So this used to be Concerto West, which was a jazz food, um, jazz club, and soul food restaurant, black owned, that Yuri worked at um, back in the day. So the family told us that. So yeah, this is, I'm going to read. So this is from Julian, who's with us here. Again, uh, none of this would have been possible without him. So we wanted to say, peace family. I'd like to say thank you to both the Kojiyama and Shabazz family, my comrades on the mural team, and the community that participated in this project over the past year and a half. Both Yuri and Malcolm spoke to the importance of building power within community-based honoring relationships and an understanding of the conditions oppressed people throughout the world are challenging. With this in mind, it is important to commit to organizing a mural that is both true to what Harlem was during their time, as well as what Harlem can be in solidarity with the community of people and cultures that are being displaced. It's been an amazing experience struggling alongside the members of this team while receiving guidance from the families in Tomia and a long list of collaborators that I'm happy to call family. Excuse me. This has been what is most dear to me in this project. The collective process of committing to study, creative education, and organizing while supporting the development of everyone who has a role, whether temporary or throughout. A space where young people are learning about two of our leaders in a way that is actively preparing them for the struggle ahead. This is the reorientation and re-education that Malcolm asked us to commit to in the principles of the Organization for Af African American Unity. In the end, I'm blessed to have been a part of any work that would make Yuri, Malcolm, and our community proud. Thank you for the support and the ongoing energy that has been a source of love.
I just, for me personally, I just want to say that transformation uh, was one of the biggest things that inspired me about Yuri and Malcolm. Um, I think as we, if, you know, there was always so much we were learning about them as much as we knew. There was so much more we were learning. And I think what um, Brother Derek said earlier about um, what's been happening, you know, in our communities, a, a lot of times at, you know, targeting our young people, um, criminalizing our young people, not giving them resources, not giving them a place to play, not giving them a safe block to walk on. So I just think, you know, transformation is something that I hold very dear. Um, and it's what has inspired me, one of the things that inspired me about Yuri and Malcolm. And I hope that everybody will, you know, take that back into their own neighborhoods and remember that, you know, our young people are our future. So everything we have to do has to think about our young people who are here with us today and the ones that are coming afterwards. Yeah. So, I just want to say one more thing. I, this was probably mentioned before, but from the bottom of my heart, I'm sure Lena, I just wanted to thank every volunteer that came out during this process. Um, as you can see, there's a long list on that wall all the way over to my left. Uh, you don't take a lot of work and a lot of hands to get done, and so we appreciate you whether you did one brush stroke or whether you were on the tip, tip, top of the ladder where I didn't want to be. Um, I really appreciate you, and I want to thank uh, just just God for an opportunity to use the gift that He's given me to bless this community. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Um. I know I already talked a lot, so I'm not going to say too much. Um, it's just really been a blessing to work along with our incredible team. I mean, Lena, Sophia, Christine, Francis, Sean, you know, the Kochiyama family really being involved. It's a major blessing. We were able to have contact with the Shabazz family as well. And we're hoping that Ambassador Atala might be able to, uh, to call in during this time. Of course, it wasn't able to happen, but she was with us in spirit, as were several of Malcolm's daughters. So it was a major blessing. Um, I also just, you know, um, this has been a crazy last year and a half, two years. Uh, we've lost many, many soldiers in these streets. Not only elders, uh, but also peers on the current day level, um, like our brother Majesty, who just passed two weeks ago. And uh, if you were at the Manhattanville Community Center event, he was the one who read um, a speech from Malcolm. He read actually the, the Ballad of the Bullet speech, which couldn't be any more timely. Um, if y'all know that speech, if you haven't read the speech, if you haven't heard it, you can look it up online, please do. It's no, never more important than in a year like this, when we got two demons running for the right to run Babylon. Um, and that's all I wanted to say. You know, we carry all of our, all of our angels with us in whatever format they may be, and know that we're riding on the shoulders of many people today. Hashtag Yuri Malcolm Mural. That's all. Hashtag Yuri Malcolm Mural. Oh, and cupcakes. Make sure you get your black, red, and green liberation cupcakes. Yeah, you open the space up to, to people to come share some words if you would like to share. Is any any thoughts around Yuri or Malcolm, the project? But also, as Francis said, please get a red, black, and green cupcake from over here. It's a celebration everybody. I um, also want to uh, just again announce for people who didn't know, we have an art station over here for young people or older people who feel young and you feel like doing some paint and some coloring right now. You're welcome to come get some refreshments. And again, everybody who would like to come and share some words, please do. Um, I was going to pass it to, uh, to Brother Chef first. But uh, please put your hands together. Can we get everybody to make some noise right quick? Yeah. Make some noise so they can hear you in your apartment and hear you in Thank you. And so, uh, again, feel free to get something from over here, but again, space for the community to come up. Advocating uh, for the arts, for youth in the community, and so I promise to do my part, um, and definitely thank you for showing us love. Thank you. Thank you, Ken Miles. Um, real quick, one more shout out before we uh, do anything else. Uh, to, to Mario, to Max, and to Chelsea for helping the film from the Maisel's uh, Cinema Young People. Oh, and DJ, DJ, DJ Ray. Yuri Koshiyama. Uh, she loved you for coming out here and supporting her. 
Uh, as you know, she was a freedom fighter. But the thing that's the principal thing that Malcolm X and Louis Kosciano was doing that, uh, right up the street was there. fighting hey. for your happiness, for your fighting for my happiness, happiness, fighting for the happiness of my family. Now, in order for the rulers to rule, they have to be in your face to convince you to think of yourself as stupid, to convince you to think of yourself as a coward, to train you to have a depre depreciated opinion for a human being. As you know, a human being is the most valuable entity in this world. So that the enemy wants you to have an appreciated opinion for that. They want to train you to think that everything you do is wrong. Now, Yui Koshiyama and Malcolm X, they were fighting to get these people out of your face because in carrying out that process, the enemy has to be in your face and that makes you a very, very unhappy person 24 hours a day. They are in our faces trying to convince us trying to saddle us with these wrong conclusions. Yuri Koshiyama and Malcolm X, they fought to bring that process to a halt so that they are very, very, they are saviors. They are our saviors. So I love you for being here. And as you know, one of the reasons why they killed Malcolm X is because he was criticizing what they do. And they don't want you to be here, but you are here. And that's an indication that you are very courageous people. So you want to tell yourself, that you are very courageous people, and that is what is going on. And so I, I love Yuri. Uh, Yuri gave me a party when I came back from prison. I was in the Black Liberation Army. I was in jail for shooting two police. So this is what Yuri was about, fighting against these people. And one last thing, Shepard said I should remind you that if you have not signed on to our email list to get information from you, Please do so, the table is over here. Thank you, I love you, I love you, I love you all. Thank you, Brother Tariq. Thank you so much. My name is Asaf. I want you to know that I want to share a personal situation that I had with Yuri. She, she came to my wedding. My wife was half Japanese and half Spanish. So I'm a prankster, in a way. So before she walked into the hall, and Calvin Butts, he did the ceremony. So in the hall, I had a huge American flag that was tied up in a knot, hanging from, hanging. I had a huge American flag that was tied up in a knot, hanging from the ceiling, symbolic that our people are in a state of emergency. The second flag, I had a huge Japanese flag with the big uh, sun on it, the same flag that went into Pearl Harbor when they attacked at the Empire. And then the third flag I had was red, black, red, black, and green, standing for the liberation of the So when Yuri walked in, she says, Asaw, what are you doing? I says, well, you know, we got to show in practice what our thoughts. So when when Calvin Butts came in and he seen the American flag tied up in a knot, and I had pictures of Che Guevara on the wall, Fidel Castro, Mao Zedong, he was on the he want he, this was the quickest marriage that he, he officiated this thing. And by the way, Bill, Yuri Kishiyama's husband, he was one of the witnesses to my uh, wedding. But he officiated the, the, the ceremony so quick. This is something personal between me and Yuri to give you an idea of things that she would do. And and he left right away. I told him, no, you can share in the buffet, you can eat and everything. No, he cut out. So I just wanted to share this personal story with you all to give you an inkling of how Yuri was. And she's a she was a beautiful woman. She was the salt of the earth. And by the way, I want to mention one more thing. When I first ran into her, I'm looking at this Japanese woman. I says, let me ask you something, because I'm very bold and frank, because I want to know where people stand. I want to know their belief system. I says, why do you give one hoot about the struggle of black people in North America? She says, I'm going to tell you something, and I'm not going to say a lot. This is Yuri talking to me. She says, I was in, I was in the internment camps during World War II. I says, you don't have to say anything to me no more, sister. And from that moment on, bosom buddies. Okay, so I, I just want to share that with you all to give you how you rewards. Thank you so much. Thank you.
Hello, I'm Riley. I'm with NYC Revolution Club, um, and I'm a follower of Baba Bakian, who's a revolutionary leader who is alive today and leading a movement for an actual revolution. And I just wanted to let people know a couple things. One is, for people who didn't know, yesterday was the 21st annual National Day of Protest against police brutality, repression, and the criminalization of a generation. The 21st anniversary. It was like. 